Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Well, they're having a good time. Do you think closing that door is going to help? No. I, I doubt it, too, but, you know, I don't know what the heck they're doing over there. Oh, no, that made all the difference in the world. <laughs> they make noise all day. And then, hey, we're going to do this live show. Let's make a whole bunch of noise. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Why is that that we are in the ripe age. Yeah. Uh, your name? What's that? Your name? Yeah. No, it's not fancy. It's five star car stereo. Oh my gosh, you're terrible. Evening! It's cold? Really? What's up? Uh. What's up, everyone? Hawaii in the house! Manchester! United or whatever, yeah. Um, you still haven't seen that show on uh, Apple TV, oh, which now I can't think of the name of it. Where the football player goes, you don't have Apple, mm -hmm. the Apple Plus. I don't have Apple Plus. That's a hilarious show. Compressors off. Yes, sir. Jason, what's up, Mr. Berg? How's it going, Bruce? Ah, uh, good day, everyone. Cold and rainy in PA. When I think of PA, I think of cold and rainy. Question, best audio system for Acura Integra 95. All right, the guy who's done, yeah, we've done uh, one in the past. Of course we've done one in the past. As far as the best, uh, that's a tough one. Massachusetts, oh, Butch, what's up, Butch? Dean checking in. <laughs> Hello from my house. <laughs> Ted much, Lasso, yeah. yes, thank you. Ted Lasso is the best, man. Oh my gosh, if you guys have Apple Plus, and have like not watched Ted Lasso, you need to, because it's phenomenal. And they just wrapped up the season. So now you can watch the whole thing. Um, it is, it's damn good. It's damn good. Dead. Um, hey, I was thinking about the Kicker CS components. Y'all suggested, uh, it says the tweeter is titanium. It's gonna mean they will be too, they, will, they are bright. I don't have a DSP. I wouldn't say they're too bright. It's, it's not a big tweeter. It's not a big tweeter at all. Um, you know, when, when you're looking at like like a, a flax, that's a giant tweeter. This is not a giant tweeter. This is a fairly small tweeter. Um, so plus they don't have, you know, they're not real powerful as far as they don't handle a lot of power. You're not gonna be putting 250 watts to them. And that's an exaggeration. You're not gonna be putting 100 watts to them of real power. So they sound really nice. They're, they're very bright. They're not bright, just get them, you'll love them. Let's just call it at that. Slamfest was fun on Sunday, mm. or Saturday, I should say. Um, so that was weird. They do this thing here called Slamfest, which we've been to before. I don't know if we've ever filmed it, and I don't think we have. And like, I had no idea it was this past weekend. Marty Dean, what's up, man? Um, no, I didn't know. I didn't either, and so everyone, like well, Friday, or Saturday, you know, John was here, Schneid, um, yeah. And he was like, are you going? And I was like, no. Oh, so if you... Uh, I, yeah, I wouldn't I, have gone. I wouldn't have you know, gone. But, uh, no. who, who won the Morels? Do you remember who it was? Uh, I don't remember. That was um, T-Bird 1980-something on yeah. Instagram. You can check it out on Instagram. But, yeah, that was... Yes, the 957 we have installed. And it's just as good as all the others. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal piece. Yeah. Uh, very happy with it. Marty's driving to Michigan. Say hi to Tommy. Oh, um, really? <laughs> so he says driving to Michigan. Michigan. Um, added a system 2013 Ford Explorer. Damn. What a job. <laughs> Had to use Pro Audio Interface DM, uh, DM608. And you lost it. <laughs> had to put low deals on factory speaker wires. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Don't test and drive, Marty. Well, you know. Not me. Yeah, <laughs> not you, Bob. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, but yeah. he, he won a mug, right? 
Ground Zero yeah, mug? Yeah. yeah. Hi guys, two quick questions. What is it safe to set your amplifier subsonic or low pass filter? Also, I have noticed what's up with the green and gray socks on the gear shifters. All right, first thing, subsonic filter and a low pass filter are two totally different things. It's a band pass channel, meaning it's a high pass and a low pass for your subwoofer. The purpose of a subsonic or a, a high pass filter on your subwoofer is because everything below a certain point just becomes excess energy and to make your amplifier obviously work a little bit more efficient if you put said high pass filter on there it will make your amplifier work better also if you have a ported box they're getting even in a sealed box ported box uh you know 32 hertz seems to be the magic number i like to go somewhere around 25 seems to work pretty well for a subsonic filter is a good starting point. You can always turn it up, turn it down, and see what works best for you. Basically, you want to set it up high enough to where you don't lose any low end bass, uh, but you know, also so that you reduce the amount of current draw of the amplifier. So it just makes the amplifier a little bit more efficient. Keep in mind, it's typically 12 dB, so it's not like it's just going to hit a wall and stop putting out low bass. It's just it's going to get to the point to where it's not making any more low bass. You're going to turn it at that frequency and let it roll down. As far as how high you want it to play up for the low pass crossover, you know, we typically start at 80 hertz and we work it from there, either up or down until we find the sweet spot that we want. As far as the sock that goes over the gear shifter, it's just there to protect the gear shifter. Some of these gear shifters are really expensive and I really don't want to pay for those so we put a cover over the steering wheel as well as over the gear shifter so that if we're you know anything were to fall as we're taking it out of the dash it will hit a sock and or it will hit the cover over the steering wheel and then we also put covers over the center console so it's just to protect the center console uh mike i would love to help you with that man but oof. do you do you know any shops in st louis not off the top of my head yeah. however meindustryawards.com there you go meindustryawards.com head over there and on the right hand side they show all the winners what's that terry from australia uh, wow look at you all right so this is the page here we're gonna switch over to the laptop meindustryawards.com come over here to where it says winners if you scroll down through this category right here all the way back to 2014 you can pop in and find dealers, installers, and all kinds of guys in your area. So I would check this list here and see if there's anybody on there. And if there is, give, give them a it call. A call. Yeah. Ooh, I like Jeremy's Van Halen. That's pretty mm -hmm. sweet. Big fan of Van Halen. Also, you know, while we're on this page, let's over here. Let's head over to the 12 Old Clean Wire Club on That's the right. YouTube. No, it's on Facebook. Facebook. And the install of the week is brought to you by who harley harley miskin took a low yep. res picture but it's a very nice um yeah nice, i know clean simple layout uh doesn't have ten thousand zip ties so some of you guys will be okay with it you know because it's you know he didn't overdo it as they say right. um which kind of is funny this brings us so congratulations if you would like your picture to be this you gotta pay for everyone to see <laughs> <laughs> no you um, don't have to pay make sure you head over and join the clean wire club if you appreciate clean wire post your pictures up ask your questions have fun that's what it's for be polite for the love of god people be polite uh don't make us don't make us be your dad and take all that stuff down um Secondly, one of the interesting things I came across this weekend when I was waiting in line at Universal Studios for hours on end because apparently people all Never decided ends. to go there this weekend, um, something occurred to me that I thought was funny. Someone was upset about the amount of wire ties that are used in installations, and they said that they prefer they prefer wires to be tucked underneath the amplifier, and, and you know they'd like to not see the wiring. And there again, I couldn't agree more. It's a style, this, this is a style, okay, as well as if you were to have drilled holes in that and then tuck the wire behind it. However, this is the thing you have to keep in mind if you're tucking your wires behind your board, is they still have to be clean, neat, tidy there, all right? So, you know, putting an amp, mounting it, and then drilling a bunch of holes and having your wire go through those holes doesn't mean that on the other side it can just be shit. 
Um, yeah. Which is usually what it is when people drill the holes, is it's usually crap. They just kind of might use a bread tie or something, or they'll just set it in place, and it looks pretty. However, I'm assuming, assuming that you walk around with clean underwear on, at least in the morning. Maybe by the end of the day, it's not so clean. It's the same thing, okay? If you're going to take the time to make an amp rack that hides all the wires underneath it, the wires still have to be clean and you still have to zip tie them up or you still have to, uh, you know, whatever you're using behind there, okay? It still has to be clean, clean, neat, and tidy. That's what the page is all about, clean, neat, and tidy. If you'd like to flip up your amp rack and show me how clean, neat, and tidy it is and not show me the amplifiers, that would be wonderful. So for all you guys out there that like to drill holes and tuck the wires in, Lift up the amp board, show me how clean and tidy your wiring is. And, and the Clean Wire Club has been few pictures. Uh, the one that I actually remember, it's um, Bryce. Yeah. Bryce, uh, he, made, uh, he made an amp rack yeah. with a Morel amplifier and the crossovers behind all the wire and yeah. uh, fuse and Look everything. Good. Look good. Beautiful. Exactly. Yeah, and then in the top, you, you don't see no wires. but. Yes, exactly, Jason. Too many custom jobs and nightmare behind the scenes. And that's my point. Um, I'm all for however you want to do the installation. Mm -hmm. By all means, sexy. But clean is clean, dirty is dirty. And if you're walking around with dirty underwear on, you probably got other problems going on. Maybe a little jock itch. Just saying. Maybe maybe change it up a little bit. All right. <laughs> Until I sweat. <laughs> <laughs> nice Felix all right so that was that I just thought that was one of those things that kind of struck me funny this weekend and I was like oh my gosh you guys also real quick as a note before we get too deep in that um, if you if you're interested in a teespring one of the new hoodies that are up here at the top of the page uh, we have zipper hoodies we have long sleeve shirts we have really pullover hoodies if you're interested in any of these Today and the 13th, so today is the 12th, tomorrow's the 13th, until midnight, if you use the coupon code HARVEST10, that's H-A-R-V-E-S-T-10 on Teespring, you'll get 10% off your purchase of everything on their site. That's two days. So today and tomorrow, if you use the coupon code HARVEST10 on Teespring, you can pick up one of the new hoodies or maybe get the Vote for Fernando shirt or whatever you want there. It's just, it's not a coupon code from us. It's just, I got an email today from Teespring saying, hey, save 10 bucks, use this, or 10% use this coupon code. There so go. there you go. For those of you guys that want to get nice and ready for the winter, um, pick up the hoodie. What's up from the Philippines? What's jamming in the background? Uh, so apparently salsa. that sounds like salsa, salsa. And though it's been quiet all day today, the hair salon next door decided to I'm guessing they're cleaning the place right now, and the cleaning crew that comes in plays it at one volume. That's all the way up. It's really quite annoying, but hey, you know, we all have to get along. So we get a little soundtrack today, that's all. Uh, who gets money for the shirts? You share with Paul? No, the shirts are ours. They, they belong to the production company, which is Smash Force Productions. Right. Um, and we so. don't get another. <laughs> so I, I price them as low as possible. So, like, the hoodies are 35 bucks. Uh, yeah. The t-shirts are 19. The long sleeve t-shirts are 20. The uh, premium pullover hoodie is 38. So I, uh, you know, I Who think it's like the three bucks because they they won't let you sell them for for nothing. Yeah. You have to make something. So even last year's hoodie you can get for 24 dollars because they have new hoodies. So new new vendors. There's another one for 29 bucks. Uh, you get a t-shirt for 17.50. But they can see it. I know, I'm just telling you. I'm, uh, I'm not showing it to you. I'm just, just telling you prices. They're cheap. Oh, okay. uh, happy Thanksgiving, fellow Canadians. Hey! Happy Thanksgiving. Sorry. Um, I like salsa, the dip, not the music too much. <laughs> nice I Jason. like what? He says, I like salsa, the dip, not the music so much. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I like both. It's okay. Um, kicker on oh, mass. Oh, yeah, definitely, Bobby. Yeah, kicker on mass. Yeah. Uh, what's the opposite of the Clean Wire Club? I should be the president of the, and the moderator. That's called 12 volt install fails. So if you head over to 12 volt install fails, you can find out what you're missing. What's up from Cincinnati? What's up? Dean Fernando, I posted a question on the Clean Wire Club about, about making my own RCAs. Do you guys ever make your own? If so, what materials do you use? Twisted wire or coax? 
That was a great question, Tim, and I will probably go check it out because this is something that I am wanting to do more research on. We don't get the opportunity to make too many RCAs here. We, as far as that goes, I mean, we have the ends, the Stinger X12 ends, Stinger, yeah, X12. Um, but we don't have the actual tips. We do have tips just in case of an emergency, and when we do those, we typically use twisted wires. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's one of those things that they don't really talk about much. Well, I mean, it, see, it's one of those things. Uh, you want to get, like, really carry on on you RCAs and everything. You mean carried away? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I say. I don't know what you hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you just um, you spend the extra money, right? Yeah. Uh, customers, you give them, this is what we can do for you and everything. Some people like the 9,000 RCAs. Other people is like, just give me the 4,000s, 8,000s, 6,000s. Lots of thousands going it's on. It's a lot of thousands. Lots of thousands. And dollars also. Uh, what do you think of the Sony head unit? Very nice. Very nice. Uh, Sony does a great job of making things very simple, which I like. So if, if you're if you're into the like, man, I just I don't need all this interaction. I just yeah. need this. Then uh, Sony excels on that, and it's very nice. Um, all right, what's up, guys from Arkansas? From oh, I'm sorry, from Kansas City. Missouri. I have a 2009 Acura TSX with a premium sound system. What do you guys recommend to integrate my factory audio system with an LC7i or the SR, the SR1 or other? Trying to do redo the whole speakers. All right. So regardless of what car you have, it doesn't matter. If you have a print. All right. Premium system, non-premium system, doesn't matter. First thing you have to do is find out how many channels we're talking about. Mm -hmm. All right. What we want to do is test the output of the radio to find out if going into the factory amplifier is variable voltage or not. Meaning when we figure out what signal is coming from the radio into the premium sound via either a test speaker, an RTA, oscilloscope, whatever tool you have, um, does the volume turn up? or turn down coming in out over those wires. If it turns up and turns down, well then you have a variable voltage output. Now you just need to figure out how many channels you have. Typically in a Honda, there's either going to be four or six or four or five. If there's a subwoofer, sometimes the, if there's a subwoofer control on the radio, there will be an output from the radio for that, in which case that'll be the fifth RCA. That means you're gonna need some form of a either high to low or a processor that has five inputs which is going to be six because they don't make a five input one what kicks out the dsr one immediately yeah uh, unless you don't want rear because the dsr has four inputs you can do front sub or you can do front rear that's up to you which there again you could totally do the dsr because unless you want fader controlled from the radio you could use a dsr to do front input sub input and then control it your fader through the volume control in the dsr if you have to go after the DSP. Now we have to figure out how many channels we need. Do we have a dedicated tweeter channel? Do we have a dedicated mid-range channel? Do we just have a dedicated front channel? Once we've figured all that out, then we can figure out what we need to bring together in order to create a, a full signal. So for example, if it has a front tweeter channel, a front mid channel, a rear channel, and a sub channel, well that's two, four, six, seven, it's going to be an eight channel. There again, if you don't need the D, the rear the rear speakers, you can create those because they're just rear speakers. I'm not saying don't amplify them. I'm saying you might not need a channel coming out of the processor of them. Then you could do easily with a six channel, and that could get into an LC7i or an LCQ1 or a, a DM608. Um, but if you have seven and you want to, then you need eight channels of input. So then you have to look for a DSP that has eight channels of input. So there, there's where you're at. You have to figure out what you're trying to feed before you can figure out what to feed it. All right, and uh, Tim, yeah, you can stop by. Um, 
We haven't been letting people in the install bay, but we do meet you out front. We give you your lanyard. We'll take pictures. You know, we'll do the quick. Of course, you wear your mask and all um, that stuff. And yeah. you know, shoot. You know, yeah, no. We've we've had plenty. We've had several. People. You know, fans come by that are on vacation now, either trying to get away from a hurricane or just on vacation here. And we'll go out and, you know, we'll just do it out say there instead of in the install bay like yeah. we normally do. So, yes, Wait. if you're in town and you want to say hi, please stop on by. When you use a crossover... <laughs> hold on, hold on. Lance, you're making me tired. Bro, I'm beat today. I'm sorry, Lance. Lance Doss, the boss, Mr. Electromedia in the house. Go, go, When go. you use a crossover with components... Should the crossovers on the amplifier be left on full pass? Question mark. Wonderful question. Ooh. See? Told you we were going to have a tomato camp today. Oh, okay. Alright, we're it going to on? grab... It is not even on. Oh yeah, but you can turn it on and it'll just power right up and we'll see if it works. Alright, I have a passive crossover. And we're going to talk about it real quick because this is the fun. I was going to say, you got to hit power on that. Okay, we'll go to the Fernando cam here in a second. Here's, here's the thing you have to keep in mind when dealing with passive crossovers. Top, bottom, bottom, top. Uh -huh. Okay? Band passes. Um, things like that. Let's see if this is working yet. Nope, it's coming. All right, we're almost there. It takes a second for it to power up. Uh, we should have powered up before the show, apparently. Um, most most guys don't do research before selling DSPs. No, you're kidding. How is that even possible? My recommendation is to, if you don't know how many channels, you know, the Nove is nine, so at least you're good there. If you don't um, know? If you don't know, at least you're safe with nine channels, for God's sakes. Um, all right, let's see if camera two is up. Ah, we got camera two. All right, so Fernando Cam is going to show us if we get a little bit closer here. So I, I'm gonna see if we can read this. Hang on, which one? The the text. All right. Hang on. Don't I'm not gonna move it. I'm just gonna okay, you 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 so, do it. All right. All right, you can see. All right. right so the first thing you see is amp input. Then you see woofer, mid, and tweeter. So this is a three-way set. So we're gonna feed our amp into here. The woofer is going to play from wherever the amp is feeding it up to where the mid starts. The mid is gonna play from the bottom or the top of the woofer to where the bottom of the tweeter is. And then of course the tweeter is going to play there on up. What that means, hold on. And break, break it. Stuff. And break it. Everyone's going, what's happening? Alright, come over to here. So we'll, we'll, we'll get a pen that doesn't work. Alright, so we'll draw this line here and we'll go mid base, mid, tweeter. Alright. Alright, so your amp comes in and it looks something like this. Okay. And that this mid bass, this is 20 hertz, this is 20,000 hertz. There's nothing stopping this mid bass here from playing down to 20 hertz, which it can't do. The mid range, which is here in the middle, has a bottom and it has a top. So it has a limit to how low it can play and a limit to how high it can play. The tweeter is going to do the same thing. It'll, it's made to play up to 20k. However, there will be a point where it's going to naturally start rolling off, but we don't need to worry about that. But it has a bottom, meaning how low can that tweeter play down? Over here in this area is going to be another crossover, and this is going to be your subwoofer. And there again, just like at the beginning of the show, we were talking about it had a subsonic filter, so this is a bandpass for that. This will be somewhere around, say, 25, 25 hertz. This will be somewhere around 80. We need this. This is missing right here. This is where your factory, this is where that amplifier comes in. That amplifier comes in and adds that. So this is gonna be electronic. And that'll be somewhere around 80 hertz. It's a good starting point for it. The rest of these are all passive. 
these two here will be electronic because this will be from your amplifier, this will be from your amplifier, this will be from your high amplifier. So all these are active. Does that make any sense? I'm just tired. Move your arm. Okay. <laughs> So to answer the question, yes, you're not gonna you're gonna leave your you're gonna leave your high pass crossovers on your amplifier. They're going to be the stopping point for your mid bass. I know, right? Alright, hopefully that helped. You put the bad pen in the back of the drawer, right? Probably I did put the bad <laughs> pen back in the drawer. <laughs> that was good. Oh. Alright, so so band passes are very important in the car audio world. A lot of people don't give them any credit, but almost every, almost every single speaker has a band pass on it. Even the tweeter is going to have a band pass on it because at some point the amplifier naturally actively crosses it over and stops it from playing up any higher because it can't do it. It just naturally rolls off, and that is a crossover point. So every speaker has a highest it can play and lowest it can play. And it's your job to figure that out, should you choose to accept your mission. All right. Uh, I have a Kicker DX 1000.1 on 210 subs, 4 ohm wire setup. After a couple of minutes, the amplifier goes on protection mode. Any ideas why? Do you have any ideas? I have no idea. I wasn't listening. I was reading about something else. What were we saying? All right. What is he out of? I have a Kicker DX 1001 on 210 subs. Okay. Four ohm wire setup. After a couple of minutes, the amplifier goes on protection mode. Any okay. ideas why? What? Well, okay, any amplifier, any amplifier, it doesn't matter whether it's that particular amplifier or not, there's only a couple things that cause an amplifier to go on protection. Immediately, the first thing that's going to cause an amplifier to go into protection is improper voltage. Improper voltage can be caused from anything from the wrong size power wire, uh, loose power wire, bad grounds, uh, CCA wiring if it needs copper because it's, you know, the wire size is too small. So there's that. That is easily checked with a digital multimeter. The next thing is the amount of resistance the amplifier is seeing. So, for example, the ohm load. The ohm load, whatever it is you think it needs to be, a digital multimeter on that will tell you whether it is right or wrong. Um, if it's a 2 ohm load and you have two 4 ohm speakers, it should be somewhere in that 2.3 range. Um, sometimes maybe 1.8 at the minimum, between 1.8 to 2.3. If it's something lower than that, well, they're wired up wrong. But there again, so that's resistance. Uh, that can also be a, a, the too small of a wire. Um, and then you have circulation, meaning there's, it's not getting enough air. And that's like the last. It's like it takes so much for that to happen because most of these amplifiers operate at an operating temperature that's hotter than they should ever possibly be. But resistance and uh, voltage are typically the problems when amplifiers are cutting off. You have to figure out which one of those is your problem, and then you can move on with your life. Last week I asked you about the Arison Forza 8.9 bit yeah. having an amp mixer for the center channel. Yeah. And it doesn't. Correct. With the Amp Pro GM61 hookup to the Bose radio, will six RCAs make it? No. Like an ox. Yeah. It does not have an up mixer built into it. It's just a dedicated center channel output, non up mixed. No, it does not. What's up, Mr. High Five Vega? Resistance is futile. Mm, the Borg is going to take over. Ah, I got no. <laughs> I got a new rooster today. Named him Pee Pee. Uh, it's Dean the Machine. Or, yeah, yeah. Mean Dean the Dancing Machine. Not really. Uh, can I use a passive crossover in place of a capacitor to protect my tweeter? I'm not worried about power. The channel is 75 warrants. Watts RMS, the crossover point for the passive crossover is 3500 hertz, 12 dB. My active setup crossover point for the tweeter is 4000 at 24 dB. Hmm. So, I mean, 
4,000 at 24 is really steep, whereas 35 at 12 dB is not. Um, that's a lot lower crossover point. Um, can either pass across from place of a passer? Oh, so you, you, you just want this to protect your two. It's, it's essentially going to do nothing. A passive crossover at 3,500 at 12 dB, the only thing that would ever do for you is if for whatever reason your, your, your active system all of a sudden just lost its memory and went full range on you. Then in which case it would protect the tweeter and hopefully you would know immediately because everything just went south. But I, I don't know, man. I, I just I don't get the purpose of that. I don't get the point of running a passive capacitor on my tweeter if I'm going to run active. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. I, you do one or the other. I mean, I, I get the whole save the tweeter, you know, save the cheerleader, save the world. All right. Uh, just doing my setup sound sounds great. Uh, Mili three ways. The only issue, it's my volume is at 70% of what it used to be. Does that mean I match the house curve to the low? Can I correct it by lowering my house curve and then returning? Huh? I got nothing. <laughs> um. Only issue, it's my volume. It's a 70% of what it used to be. So, here's a thought. I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Um. Take one channel of the car, usually the, the passenger side, and maximize it, all right? Get the most that you can out of that one channel, okay? Or that side of the car, meaning make it, uh, figure out where your, your clip point is, figure out where your distortion is, tune it, and set that side of the car to where it is playing as loud as it possibly can, and you're happy with it, and you're satisfied that it's not going to break. Then, match everything to that side and that's the loudest that car is going to play and that's that's really all i got for that uh second question that i saw up there was is there any purpose where you'd use two dsps yeah if you need more channels one of the problems that we run into is that like say let's say we look at a forza forza is nine channels uh that's it that's all there is there's nine channels what if you need 16 well now you could get the alpine but up until then if you didn't have a big processor like that, or there's a Helix, you know, so there are certain situations where people will run multiple DSPs just because they need more channels. I've seen lots of people do with audio controls. They'll get two D, two of the D six twelve hundreds, um, and there again, it just depends. I don't know why I'm saying there again a lot tonight. I apologize. It just depends what you're trying to do. If you just need equalization and you're not worried about time alignment. Well then, yeah, it's, it's, it's just an EQ, and you have plenty of bands of equalization to go to town on. Why not? Now, you can still do time alignment. It's just a little bit more work because you have to do the math externally and make sure you add in all the numbers appropriately to where they need to go and that it, the right delay has been added to each one. Because um, most of the time, when, you're, when a DSP is figuring out delay, it's only figuring out for the channels it has. So you may need to do a little bit of extra work as far as that goes but now there are bigger dsps that will handle multiple channels whereas in the past it wasn't always the case uh it, it will the tweeter if there is a pop when the system it turns off okay lance is answering somebody's question you go lance you go we need to talk by the way um nano for president make america base again always um that's like adding sugar to frosted flakes I don't remember that analogy. I don't remember what that comment was for, but I don't know what comment. That was great. Um, uh, I wish I could watch the boys with kids, but, ooh, no. Yeah. For those of you who aren't watching the boys season two now, I got nothing. I'm not going to tell anyone to watch it because it's like, uh, man, I mean, whose head got smashed this week? Um all right okay go what could what what could be the cause of the 2017 Camry OEM backup camera 
to work on and off. I installed Pioneer 2660 NEX with the RR harness. Worked fine for a couple of weeks, just fine until now. All right, check this. Uh, there is a power line that goes to the camera that feeds the camera. I don't know which two they are, but I believe in the RR instructions they do tell you. You need to make sure that the six volts that is powering that camera up is still putting out six volts out of the RR. Uh, for some reason it may have stopped, in which case you just need to add in an extra, either replace the RR or add in an external six volt power supply. But that's the only reason why the camera would stop working is that it lost power. Um, weird but it has happened uh, we have run into certain situations where it's 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 been glitchy and it just made more sense to put in a um, volt 39 from pack to power the rear camera and then that solved all the issues but that's what I would check uh, have you have any experience with the Sony head units with the high power built-in amplifiers uh, we've never put one in, however, I have sat in Sony's car with one and been thoroughly impressed with what they had done. Uh, they used it to power like a 10 inch subwoofer and components and it was insane what, what was happening out of that. Wow, yeah. Um, what size speaker wire will you recommend to run subwoofer to an amplifier, 400 watts woofer? I just use 12, 12 gauge for everything. When it comes to subwoofers, it's either 12 or 10. It's just pretty much it. What 6 by 9 components do you recommend for sound quality? Best of the best. Ooh. Well, you have the Morel 6 by 9 components, which are really nice. Alpine has the X-Type 6 by 9 components, which are really nice. Um, Kicker's coming out with their KS, but they're not out yet, so I don't know how those sound. Uh, All right. Is that it? I think that's it. When it, you know, really expensive six by nines. Audison makes some in the Prima line, and Focal makes some in the Integration line, but those other two cost way more. If an amplifier has a bass boost, it is okay to use it. It will make the amplifier hot. It will hurt the swaps. Bass boost and gain are, are going to be run hand in hand. If you are turning up, like okay. When you're doing your, your gain adjustment, whether your amplifier, if you need to use an oscilloscope, whether the amplifier has a distortion detector or a clip detector built into it, or using a DD1, those two things have to be adjusted at the same time. For example, if you decide you like, like Rockford, we'll take Rockford for example, because they have punch bass, and that's the easiest one. Um, everyone else just has theirs, and that's fine. They're all the same. Uh, 45 hertz, you know, plus or minus 18 dBs, or plus 18 dB usually, sometimes 12. As you start turning that up to make the music more boomy, your your input, your gain is going to, the clip detector lights are going to come on because it's going, holy crap, you're really turning me up. It's it's gain. It's it's a plus gain. So you have to kind of kind of do this. To, to figure out the right amount of fat bass sound with the right amount of gain sound. If you just turn this up to, let's say, here, and then you start doing this, you'll be like, oh, you, I mean, you can do that. I like to play with both a little bit, so if I turn, like, if I decide I want it more boomy, I immediately have to turn my gain down to compensate for how much boomier I'm making this up. So you have to work with them both at the same time. Uh, are the Focal Access speakers worth the extra money over the Focal Auditor? Yes. Yes, they are. And I can't say that enough. Any videos coming covering the Helix Auto EQ RTA features? It seems like it's a kick, but to get a good tune under 30 minutes. No. I, I, <laughs> No. I mean, I haven't used it. I'm gonna try just to see what it does. Well, you don't need it though, no, because it's only for it's only for input EQ. Yeah. It's you don't you have a signal. You have a perfectly flat signal going into it. So what is that gonna do for you? I don't know. Just. just I mean, it's not gonna do anything. <laughs> no. I mean, it's not like it's got a mic. It's not like it's no. a key where it has a mic. It's literally just looking at the signal that's coming in. It's only part of the equation. You don't need it. You have a flat signal coming in. 
if we still had your factory radio in, then we could use it. Right, right. right but we right. don't have that problem. We don't have any de-equalization that needs to be done to, to make it sound better. Yeah. Um, it's just there. Here you go. Okay, so, but if you I make the GS9... Funky. Funky. Yes. And, and try to fix it with the helix but that will again, no, i'm just saying just yes, to, have, yes, just to would, do, do anything that, yeah but we're only de-eqing it we're not yeah. actually eqing at that point so you still need to eq it after the fact it's it's not a it's not an end-to-end -end solution it's just that solution is to just like a key lock it goes in and it fixes it and it makes it flat so you can then apply right. your house curve to it you can't just overlay a house curve onto something and it, if it, until it can hear, so that's what, all right, so that's what the um, Audison made BitTune. Mm -hmm. BitTune is ears, essentially. It has a five-way microphone, it has an RTA, and it could go into the car and it could analyze everything and then feed that information into the amp. So you could essentially set up their house curve in their amplifier in 15 minutes or less and be done. Everything they will be time aligned, it. everything will be perfect and ready to go. They have it for an output EQ now as well. You have to use your own mic. Yes, so if you have that, then then perfect. Yeah, okay. But that's the thing, you have to have the mic because it doesn't, if it can't hear, it can't fix. Will you sell the DM810 setup, Turn tuning file for 2019 RAM? You did? I don't have one, no. I have the same setup with the three-way audio Frox front stage running active DMA10, Foxbox, and two tubes. Oh, yeah, that but that's, one. Yeah, but it's not going to sound But that's the same. totally different, yeah. Yeah, because you'd have to have the same amps with the gain set same the same speakers, way. It was, same well, speakers, same crossover. He has, he, has he, he has the same speakers. Um, okay. But I don't, I don't think it's going to work. You know, plus you also have to be sitting in the same spot he was. Because um, you got to remember, there's a lot. It's not just, I mean, everyone is unique. Yeah. Um, the curve could be similar, but it's going to be unique to that car. Uh, do you think Kicker will come out with a DSP? Uh, I had a Kicker front row for years back in the old days. Do they have technology to roll out a full-fledged DSP? I mean, if you look at, okay, if you look at what a Kicker key is and a key lock, so a key lock, as we just said, will take an input and flatten it out and fix all the all-pass filters and all, all the nonsense that's on two channels. The key lock will do. So that's what makes the key lock so awesome. The kicker key has the microphone to listen to the system and fix everything. So conceivably, if you took a key lock and a key and combined the two of them together, you could come out with a pretty badass DSP. Now, are they going to do that? I don't know. But they have all the pieces to do it. They would just have to do it. And whatever comes along with all that fun stuff. Any experience with running a big three for 2018 Honda Core? I don't see any way to get to the alternator. I wouldn't even waste your time with that on that car. I would just improve the ground. Everything we've ever done in a Honda Accord, the main problem is the factory ground sucks. You're not going to get any more power coming out of the alternator by switching the wiring. It's, it's not going to give you any more. They are actually not bad, but the ground in the car is horrible. And that is the one thing we replace on every Honda Accord that we do is the ground wire. Uh, we don't have any issues. So thank God, but that's, so keep it simple. Ampro... Amp Pro 2, four channel amps are different. Okay. Looking to replace the factory amp speakers in a 2007 Jeep Wrangler. I know your favorite. Nice. There you go. Uh, would prefer to use the factory locations and not under seat. What amp would you recommend? Uh, would Sound Digital's... Evo Evo oh, yeah, fit. Uh, Looking to replace the seven Jeep Wrangler. Yeah. I know you favorite. Yeah, no, you can fit them up in the dash. I mean, it just depends on how thrifty you are. But yeah, you could probably fit them over in the dash. Um, I don't see why not. Just trying to think. 
Um, I know the last one we did, we went with the we went with Alpine. Yeah. And we did the Alpine little monoblock That's and the the uh, oh sorry we did the Al Alpine monoblock wasn't out so we did the kicker monoblock and we did the Alpine four channel. Correct. But now that we have the sound digital, I think the sound digital are a little bit taller. They are a little bit taller than those. Than the... But you could probably fit them up in the driver's footwell. Yeah. Because I know where we put the 801.5, there's there's plenty of room in that area to move. I mean, because the amplifiers are tiny, so it's not yes. like they're connected to one another. So, yeah, I don't see any reason why you couldn't build some kind of a mount to put them up in there. What defines an SQ system to you? What defines an SQ system? Oh, that's good. Is it? Yeah. Well, you have an answer? No. Well. <laughs> um... I, I don't okay I don't really think it's the system per se more so the user I think that would be a better way like you know when we, when we hang out in the parking lots of the car shows and those guys are all SQ guys okay but they're not SQ guys in the sense that they're competition guys and I think that line has gotten extremely blurred you know what I mean like everyone assumes that all those guys are sound quality guys and I guess for the most part, a lot of them are, but they're competition sound quality guys, which isn't the same thing. I think somebody that sits in a car and can appreciate the music and, and like has some way to tell what they like. Mm -hmm. Like you could sit in the car and go, oh, here's that spot in that song. Correct. Ah, uh, uh, there it is. You know? Now, keep in mind, sound quality, like, for example, Ayaska and all these guys, they have totally different... Uh, well, those are the other guys. Uh, ...stages of competition, right? So, for me, that's personal. That That's me. For me, sound quality is something that I, I listen every day uh, from, from work to home, and I want to enjoy it. You know, I don't want to be so quiet. I want to... Turn it up because the GS9 Ooh. goes to 50, so I turn it up to 49. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, nah, 45, 45. Oh, and God. and I turn it up, and I want to enjoy it. It sounds clear. It sounds nice. I love it. You know, for me, that's like I don't think anyone. But listening and to I an and I appreciate. I listen Nick's truck. I was in Brian's car. Yeah. I was in a lot of cars, and they're like, "Wow, man, it's it's amazing." It it's sounds like, really good. Whole oh, it's like, boom. I, don't know. I, I think I think it just has to be enjoyable in the end. I, I really, you know, we've sat in some cars that suck really yep. bad, um, and we sat in some cars that sound really good. Um, I guess if you wanna if you wanna define sound quality, mm -hmm. I think it's more of a feeling than anything. Uh, we did a car, remember the, what was it we did uh, the other day where I sat in the car and I said, this totally sucks. There was no imaging, it was just a radio and four speakers, and it was just like... Well, you got used to that yeah, center image Yeah, so I mean, I, I, feel, I feel any system that is trying to add in some form of an image, so imaging and performance. So right now in my car, I have the time system. alignment Yes. and preset one. And the preset two, I got no time alignment. Yeah, it's just like oh, four speakers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left, up. left, right. Left, right, done. That's it. Uh, it I can switch it because I need the laptop. I need to have the. Oh, so now it's set the wrong way. No, everything is normal. Oh, okay. But so you have time. I'm just saying, but I, I always oh, have oh, okay. that preset right with time alignment off. Right. Yeah. Uh, sound quality and accurate reproduction of music. Mm, not necessarily. No, I, I don't I don't really think so because what is an accurate reproduction of music? You know your what way kind of, of reproduction? You know your way of listening to to a piece of music doesn't ne isn't necessarily the way that I'm going to listen to a piece of music. You know, right. if if I'm used and to what hearing, type of music? Well, yeah, I mean the, the guy was like orchestra. Nobody listens. I mean, we're, I mean, yeah, we all have John Williams. Yeah. Uh, you know Vader music. You know, bum bum bum. Oh, it's so awesome. Um, we're never listening to that though. You, there's not a like a day to day. You're gonna hop in your car and go. You know what I really want to listen to now? Ooh, Luke and Leia, or uh, Charlie Brown, Linus and Lucy. No one's playing that crap. It's, it's, <laughs> I mean, they're not. I mean, no. I, the only time I listen to that is Christmas time. I'll you know listen to Schroeder bang on his piano, and I'll have a good time. So it's funny because a lot of people um, demo. 
those sound qualities with those type of sounds. Yeah. Like, it's like, wow, it's amazing. But when you play in different songs that you play normally every day or every yeah. other day, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't sound the same. So when I was with Brian of ARC, he plays... Normal stuff. Normal stuff, like, right yeah. there, play it. And I'm like, oh, man, it's like... It's not fair. Hey, no. <laughs> sounds is not fair. It's, this one sounds really, really nice. Yeah. Oh, come on, Bobby. You know you're a closet country junkie. <laughs> you, you listen to that hick hop. Hick, yeah. Hick, hick hop? Whatever the hell it's called. Um, jazz sounds good. Jazz does sound good. Yeah. But there again, how much jazz can you listen to in a day? I mean, one I, song. I, I mean, you know, I went through like a week where I listened to a bunch of jazz and it was like... I have, I have a playlist of when I want to listen to that kind of instruments and yeah. all that stuff and it's like it's cool yeah, but then at the end of the day you like just salsa. Blast i love salsa and i listen constantly and it's like all right to a question the new polarity checker you guys are pushing and what's the difference between that and the old one um we have a wonderful video that talks yes. all about the differences between the two we actually show you the old one and oh, the new one I but because you you've asked the main difference between the old one was a reactive piece, meaning you can only hook speakers up to it and test speakers. Mm -hmm. um, this one, you can actually connect to the output of the device right. and read what is coming over the line. So for example, if you have a factory amplifier in the car and you're feeding, the signal coming from the radio is feeding the factory amplifier and you're trying to figure out the, the two random wires that are going to it, the yellow and the purple, which one of those is positive, you can now take your PT9A+, Plus, connect to those two wires, hit the read button, and it'll tell you the purple is, is positive and the yellow is negative, and which you couldn't do before. And to me, it's worth its weight in gold for that simple thing because I would have to hook up a small amplifier, hook up a small speaker, play a track, read it, it was just a pain. So now it does all that for me, it makes life super cool. Once, once I went DSP with time alignment, everything else sounded like poop. Exactly, right? Oh, so sad. And there again, most, okay, so here's the rub, guys. Most of these radios that you're buying have time alignment built into it, and you're not using it. And you should be, because you can take your, fact, you can take your Pioneer, Kenwood, Sony, whatever, radio, JVC, you go into the time alignment section, and they even have presets there for you. You can turn it on and start playing with it right now. And just go, oh, wow, it's up on the dash. It has imaging. That's sound quality. Perfect, I'll take two. We, you should have took them last week when you could have got the discount on it. Uh, Dave Matthews Band sounds good, too. Oh, yeah, it does. I have a Dave Matthews Band playlist. Big fan. Um... Uh, how are my... T oh, Elias, we are doing well. Elias. By that, we are tired, um, sleepy, burnt yes. out, exhausted. So we're doing about good. Good. Yeah. Oh, dude, much. did you see see this uh, Dwayne here? Six by nine components, 100 watts RMS. I want to add the three and a half or the four. 40 watts. Can I run the three and a half or four off a Kenwood deck RMS with a filter, filter cap? cap. Uh, I mean, are you talking like the six by nine and a four off channel one and two? No. Uh, if you have the 6.9 on an amplifier, so a radio can only power two speakers on the front channels, that's a left and a right, and two speakers on the rear channels, that's a left and right, that's it. That's all you want to do, anything more than that's bad. All right, you ready for the book? Yeah, read me the book. Oof. All right. Can you summarize? Uh, I'm <laughs> Just get to the point of the question. To. All right, 2011 Cambry. Got that. Right? Uh, running an AVIC 8500 and the ACM 4.300 powering Hertz DG. In the front and coaxes in the rear are just big the DMA 10. He want to go full active. Um, okay. So, so we got an I ACM powering all that stuff? 400. Hang on. Uh, he got three setups, right? So he has an old school Soundstream Reference 200. It's two by twenty-five. Yeah. Should I run the tweeters out of this one, or the coaxials in the back? Full active two-way. Uh, will sound great of powering the ACM amplifier. 
I didn't like those amplifiers when they were new. They old school? Yeah. Two. Then once to get more money, I was thinking about picking another ACM 400.4. Good idea. And not the Hertz EVM 1000.5 4 inch mids for the three way up front stage. Okay. Well, adding the different, with adding on the different line of Hertz be bad because that's different. DG's and the EVM. Well, no, you're going with the DSP. Uh, so as long as, and the efficiencies are pretty commonplace for all of those. So yeah, you'll be fine. All right. Uh, the three, number three, the finish running a cheap seal self power pioneer 12 inch with an epicenter uh, would be good. No, God, no. Why would you do that? That doesn't even make sense. Uh, I picked the ACM 1.300. Give me a recommendations on a single 12 soft. Um, that would pair with a nice custom box. I mean, if you like Pioneer, I mean, obviously you go that, but I'd pick up like a Rockford P1 or P2. I would do or, P2. Or the, the Kicker uh, Yellow Comp, comp R's. I mean, keep in mind, it's a Cambry. It's a bigger... Um, yeah. I would do a P2 with the 1.300 so, that you P2 have. P2 or a Comp R? Mm-hmm. Yeah, P2 or a Comp R. Yeah, keep it simple. Yeah, totally. Um... But no, don't use that old amplifier, man. Keep that on the shelf, you know, make it a bookend, frame it, do whatever you want. Get get the new amps, let those things go. All right. All right, make it quick. You, 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 you want another one? We got, we got time for one more. All right, 2016 Ford F-150 with an aftermarket radio install. Should I still use an audio control LC 4.800 or should I use a standard amplifier for the highs? I would get a D4.800 personally. I don't care what kind of radio you have. You still need a DSP of some kind to really, voila. Um, this is getting the 1007 New Kenwood XR floating screen Mac Daddy, feeding that into the D61200 because we want a DSP so that we can make this thing sound Mwah. That's right. Uh, but either way, if you don't want to do DSP, yes, the LC61200 or 4.800 are awesome amplifiers. All amplifiers nowadays have some form of high, okay, all. 90% of the amplifiers out there have some form of high level input on them. Mm -hmm. The only difference is out of the controls is really awesome, uh, but that's not to say others aren't too. Point is, it's still 120 watts by four or six, which is pretty impressive, and they sound great, so do yep. it. All right, guys. All right, guys. That brings us to the end of the show. Yeah. For those of you guys that don't remember, let's do some laptop time here. Congratulations to the winner of the Clean Wire Club. Make That's sure you right. head over to Facebook and join the Clean Wire Club. That was uh, Harley Miskin. Harley, yeah. If you're interested in supporting the shows, well, we got cool tools that we use to do all our installations. That's at dandftooldrawer.com. DNF Tool Drawers is a place you can find all the cool things that we use in order to do our stuff. Yeah. Uh, we even sell our cameras there. So if you want to pick up Buy cameras, one. you want to become a cool Facebooker, YouTuber, whatever they call them, head over there. And of course, Teespring slash store slash five star. Right now, you can save 10% on them until tomorrow. That's the 13th at midnight. If you use the term Harvest 10, H A R V E S T. 10 at checkout you will save 10 percent off your purchase definitely want to head over there and pick up one of these new hoodies winter is coming so why the heck not right um simon yes i totally recommend to get the pt9 s plus even if you have a regular handheld use them both you can use the pt9 a as the yeah. as the portable so yep. you can have it sitting back in the trunk popping away and then use the other one to go around the cars and make it awesome all right guys that's it. That's been fun. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. Instagram is a place where we do daily mm -hmm. uh, five minutes of five star. There's never five minutes. It was like five minutes for like the first week. And also don't forget on October 23rd at six o'clock mm -hmm. Eastern Standard Time, Kicker is going to be doing their Kicker on Mask. Uh, it starts as, it, you can get there as early as five. The show starts at six. It runs for as long as it does. And then after it's over, the two of us, Mr. High Five Vega and Mr. Big D Wiz, we're doing a wrap up show talking about all the cool new stuff that we just got our minds blown checking out. So, and you can find that on their Facebook or YouTube channel, as I said. And of course, we will see you guys Friday morning at yep. nine o'clock 
on Dean and Fernando's Car Stereo Clips for the news. Keep in mind, I just uploaded a bunch of news, so if you guys are like, where are the clips? We got two weeks worth of clips going, plus whatever extra, so we're back, we're back deep into that. And then Thursday night at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, you can catch me in High Five Vega over on his channel doing whatever it is we do. Polarity Check is the name of the show. We just talk, or I talk, he asks cool questions. It's a lot of fun. It's not a Q&A show, it's more of a, hey, let's talk about car audio and have a good time. And then Saturday morning, dude, the week's over, we're here. We'll be there at six o'clock Saturday night doing this again. again. It's already over. The week's done. End the show. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>